Okay, um, I, I'm delighted to welcome you to the 2017 Gutenberg Lecture. And uh, my name is Doug, Doug Ween, so I'll be uh, the, um, leading the session. And uh, before, this is um, the lecture of the seismology section. So before we do the Gutenberg Lecture, we always uh, uh, give the uh, K.T. Aki Young Scientist Award uh, is presented. So um, that's the first thing that we will do. Um, the 2017 K.T. Aki Young Scientist Award goes to Dr. Lucia Galtieri, who received her bachelor's and master's, uh, master's in physics from the University of Bologna in Italy. Uh, she obtained a double PhD degree from IPGP in France and the University of Bologna in 2014. And she did a, a postdoc at Lamont uh, Doherty and is currently a, a postdoctoral research associate uh, at Princeton University. Her PhD work uh, obtained novel results that clarified fundamental issues about the generation of seismic ambient noise and the coupling between oceans uh, and the solid earth. And as a postdoc, she's done important studies that have helped develop a new field investigating the seismic signals from mass wasting events. Uh, Lucia Galtieri is an outstanding young scientist who's already made substantial contributions to several developing fields of seismology. So it is an honor to present her with the 2017 Geiti Aki Young Scientist Award. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for uh, this uh, opportunity to give a very small speech. Uh, I want to thank my nominators and uh, the uh, ACU Award Committee and uh, the whole uh, AGU seismology section for this. And I will take the opportunity for uh, acknowledging uh, a few people. Uh, I would like to thank my PhD advisors, uh, Eleonore Stutzman at uh, IPG. IPGP, uh, Institut de Physique du Globe de Paris in France, and Andrea Morelli at University of Bologna in Italy, and my most recent uh, mentors and collaborators, Joran Ekstrom at LDO of Columbia University, and Friedrich Simons and Jeroen Tromp at Princeton University. And finally, I would like to acknowledge uh, all the scientists, seismologists, who were involved in the uh, European Union Initial Training Network Quest, uh, which provided the framework for my PhD studies and provided an amazing and uh, thriving environment. Thank you very much. The 2017 Gutenberg Lecture uh, will be given by Dr. Suichi Kodaira. Uh, Dr. Kodaira received his bachelor's, uh, master's, and PhD degrees from Hokkaido University, uh, PhD in 1992. Uh, then he was an assistant professor at Hokkaido University before coming to Jamstech in 1996. He is now director of the Research and Development Center for Earthquakes and Tsunami at Jamstech. Um, I have heard Dr. Kodaira described as the most influential marine geoscientist of the 21st century, and so today we are fortunate to uh, see some of his advances. I would have to say the, the occurrence of a great earthquake, uh, although it's a disaster for society, uh, represents a unique opportunity for, in which the earth reveals its secrets, and Dr. Kodaira and his colleagues uh, had laid the groundwork before the earthquake uh, by doing uh, surveys uh, and, and um, raising the questions, the scientific questions that needed to be answered. And so his their observations after the 2011 Tohoku earthquake have completely changed 
our understanding of how subduction zone earthquakes behave. Um, he has also made many contributions to understanding the ocean crust uh, and subduction zones. An example of that uh, his work is his work in the Izu Bonin uh, uh, volcanic arc, which shows how volcanic centers build ocean crust. Dr. Kodaira will now present uh, the Gutenberg Lecture, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he says. Okay, uh, thank you for the kind introduction. The, uh, I'm greatly honored to be here uh, today. Uh, first of all, before uh, my presentation, I'd like to express my great thanks to the JAMSTEC scientists I uh, listed here, uh, especially uh, Nakamura-san and Fujiwara-san, Fujiya-san. They uh, contribute very much uh, about the Japan Trench uh, study as a uh, first author of the paper, which I'm going to talk about. And also, I greatly appreciate uh, Takahashi-san's and Sato-san's contribution to the Izu Bonin uh, Mariana work. OK, uh, since the last two decades, our JAMSTEC Marine Seismology Group have been studying uh, in subduction zone, as well as the oceanic plate, by using active and passive seismic uh, approach. Among those uh, scientific topics uh, for today, I uh, chose three uh, main scientific topics. The uh, first topic I'm going to talk about today is our study about sleep behavior along megathrust. And I'm going to uh, focus on the uh, geophysical and seismological study to examine the sleep to the trench during 2011 Tohoku Oki earthquake. And then our second topic I'm going to talk about today is a structure study of the oceanic plate entering the subduction zone as the input material to the subduction zone. And the last topic uh, for today is the uh, structure study uh, to examine the evolution of islander crust. And uh, I'm going to give the uh, review of our seismological study in the East Bonin uh, Mariana Arc as the output from subduction zone. OK, before uh, I'm going to present our scientific result, I'd like to briefly introduce JAMSTEC Active Source Seismic System. The JAMSTEC is now uh, operating a research vessel Kaire, uh, which has a 7,800 cubic inch uh, air gun array. And also, the, we have the 6,000 meter 444 channel streamer cable. And one of the uh, unique points of JAMSTEC active source seismic uh, uh, system is that we are operating huge number of ocean bottom seismograms. Actually, uh, I can't count exact number of OBS uh, we have, uh, but uh, I could say uh, we are operating more than 350 ocean bottom seismograms uh, for the uh, active and passive or seismic studies. And recently, we developed the so-called uh, ultra-deep uh, ocean bottom seismogram, which is quite a useful tool to study the subduction zone around Japan, the way our water depth is uh, more than uh, 7,000 or 8,000 meters. OK, uh, I'm going to uh, present about the first topic, uh, which is the uh, geophysical and seismological study to examine the slip to the trench during 2011 Tohoku Oki earthquake. Uh, I think you remembered clearly what happened uh, almost seven years ago uh, in Japan Trench, uh, that is uh, Mount Junai and Tohoku Oki earthquake. And during this earthquake, uh, we observed uh, many uh, drastic geodynamic uh, processes for example, the huge uh, co-seismic displacement observed by land and seafloor uh, geodetic stations, and also very strong and complicated ground motion 
uh, observed by a dense uh, seismic network uh, on the Japanese island as well as a global network. And the huge tsunami uh, hitting to the uh, entire coastline of the northern part of Japan uh, were observed by uh, many stations uh, uh, at the coastline uh, along the entire Japanese island. <clears throat> so using those data, many uh, study showed the uh, core seismic slip distribution. Of course, uh, details are different from model to model. But there is one uh, common striking character of slip distribution. Uh, that is a huge slip uh, in the kind of compact region uh, very close to the trench. So those three uh, figure on the screen show the uh, slip distribution obtained by the uh, geodetic and earthquake and tsunami uh, data. Uh, they are kind of independent data. But uh, uh, the old model shows 50 to 70 uh, meter uh, core seismic sleep very close to the central part of the Japan Trench. So those results may uh, indicate need to uh, revise a uh, widely accepted conceptual model before uh, this earthquake. Uh, the conceptual model uh, tells us that uh, the uh, shallow portion of the uh, subduction seismogenic zone is a seismic or a stable sliding zone. Uh, but we still have the very little uh, direct observation to examine our sleep in the shallow portion of the Yato 11 to Hokuoki earthquake uh, rupture zone. So uh, in order to tackle with uh, this uh, problem, the JAMSTEC have been having uh, many uh, geophysical or seismological crews uh, around Japanese, I mean, uh, Japan Trench region. And the first data, uh, first crews uh, we have heard is a rapid response crews, uh, which uh, started just three days after uh, the earthquake. And the first data we observed uh, during the rapid response crews is the uh, brassimetry data along two profile, very close to the epicenter, crossing to the uh, Japan Trench axis. So this uh, figure shows the uh, basimetry data uh, acquired uh, soon after the earthquake. The uh, black arrow indicates the location of the uh, trench axis, and uh, we have the water depth is more than 7,500 meters there. And uh, a reason why we choose uh, this profile is that uh, we acquired basimetry data along one uh, profile uh, before earthquake in 1999. So the, uh, our purpose is to uh, try to uh, detect the core seismic displacement by comparing the bathymetry acquired before and after the earthquake. So the uh, second figure from top shows the uh, differential bathymetry image, uh, which is the difference of bathymetry uh, between before and after the earthquake. So again, a red triangle indicates the location of tri uh, trench axis. So in this figure, you can see the very much orange-ish and uh, yellow-ish uh, color region, uh, which indicate uh, uh, basimetry difference, uh, 20 or 30 meter. And those huge basimetry difference are extend to the trench axis and stop exactly at the trench axis. So from uh, this figure, we uh, found, uh, conclude that uh, core seismic uh, seafloor displacement by this earthquake extend exactly at trench axis and stop there. And uh, to uh, confirm this result, uh, we calculated the uh, same differential bathymetry data using another data set uh, acquired before earthquake in 2004. And the uh, second figure from bottom uh, shows that uh, that result and the uh, basimetry image is uh, quite the same as uh, I showed before. And uh, the thing at the bottom shows the differential basimetry uh, calculated uh, from uh, using two data sets acquired uh, before earthquake in 2004 and 1999. So we don't see the, any uh, significant uh, basimetry difference uh, along this profile. And uh, then, uh, in order to estimate uh, displacement value and its direction, uh, we made a grid search to minimize the standard deviation uh, of the depth difference between uh, two surveys. And uh, those, uh, from this calculation, we estimate the horizontal displacement of, 
of 50 to uh, 56 meter. And also, uh, we estimated uh, vertical displacement 7 to 10 meters. And I would like to emphasize that uh, our uncertainty is about several meters in vertical and 20 meters in horizontal. So our obtained 50 to 56 meters is very much about the uncertainty. So the, what we see from the differential bathymetry data is uh, the, during this earthquake, uh, we got huge horizontal movement of, of the overlighting plate, and uh, that movement is uh, stopped at exactly at the trench axis. And next data we uh, took a look at uh, during the uh, rapid response cruise is Marichanne seismic reflection data acquired along the uh, same profile of the differential bathymetry profile. So this is a section. And uh, you can see the very clear landward dipping uh, uh, reflector, which is the top of a shiny crust. And since the, the uh, differential bathymetry uh, results tell us the uh, co seismic seafloor displacement reached at the trench axis, we are focused on uh, looking at the uh, seismic section in the trench axis. So, this is a, a blow up se section of the uh, trench axis. Uh, and actually, this data image uh, were acquired uh, before earthquake in 1999. So, one of the very uh, striking image you can see here is a uh, step like uh, structure like this. Uh, this is actually horse graben uh, structure which formed uh, in the outer lies region before subduction due to bending on plate. So this uh, structure is not very much related uh, to this uh, Tohoku Oki earthquake. And uh, in the next slide, I'm going to show you the uh, seismic section we acquired uh, soon after the earthquake, earthquake during rapid response cruise. So please take a look at this small peak in here and the very flat uh, seafloor in the trench axis. I'm going to show you the uh, section acquired after earthquake. So the structure changed like this. Uh, I will do it again. Uh, this uh, small peak moved seaward, and we have the kind of upheaval structure in the trench axis. And also, we see the uh, kind of uh, disturbance of sedimentary uh, structure in the trench axis. So from uh, this seismic image, as well as a uh, high resolution seismic image we acquired along the same profile, uh, we interpret uh, this structure that the uh, forward and thrust uh, structure limited in the trench axis was grown by a co seismic, huge co seismic uh, this, uh, strip reaching at the trench uh, axis. So, from this image, uh, we uh, propose that uh, the forward and thrust uh, structure limited in the trench axis can be used as the uh, structure proxy, proxy to identify the uh, strip to the trench uh, event. Of course, this uh, structure uh, was. Uh, have been grown by the steady state subduction. Uh, but what we see from the uh, time lapse seismic image from here, uh, this structure was uh, very much uh, grown by the uh, co seismic seafloor, or I mean, co seismic displacement of Walliding Plate. Okay, so uh, next question is how is the spatial variation of the strip to trench? So, in order to tackle with uh, this uh, problem, the recently Fujiwara san uh, compiled the additional differential bathymetry data along uh, the several profiles. So, first, uh, I will show you the uh, new bathymetry image in the central part of Japan Trench. So, if you take a look at those uh, new uh, three additional profiles, the uh, character is quite the same as I showed before. The, uh, we estimated uh, horizontal displacement 34 to 96 meter along those profiles. And also, uh, we see uh, that the difference of bathymetry uh, reached at trench axis and stopped at there. So from those new uh, additional information, uh, we uh, conclude that core seismic strip, uh, core seismic f or seafloor displacement reached at trench axis uh, between 38 uh, degree and 38.5 degree. But uh, if you uh, take a look at uh, another section at uh, 50 kilometers south of the epicenter. The differential bathymetry shows like this character. Uh, the, we estimate 
estimated almost at zero meter horizontal displacement from this data. And also, we don't see any clear change of difference of asymmetry at the trench axis. So from this uh, image, uh, we uh, conclude that uh, there is no observable uh, seafloor core seismic displacement uh, at uh, 50 kilometers south of the epicenter. So uh, then, uh, in order to take a look at the structure deformation the trench axis, the, we have been acquiring uh, high resolution seismic data to cover the entire trench axis. And recently, uh, Nakamura-san compiled all available high resolution seismic data. And uh, I'm going to show you the, one of the seismic section acquired along uh, one uh, differential basimetry profile uh, where we observed a huge core seismic seafloor displacement. And in this section, uh, we also uh, uh, observed the uh, fold and thrust uh, structure limited in the trench axis, like we observed uh, along the uh, profile, we acquired rapid response crews. But if you take a look at high resolution seismic image along the, uh, the, uh, this uh, differential basimetry profile, where we don't see any uh, significant observable uh, core seismic seafloor displacement, structure is very much different. Uh, we don't see the, any deformation structure in the sedimentary section uh, at the trench axis. OK, and uh, there is one uh, issue uh, or problem uh, we would like to uh, answer. Uh, that is uh, kind of 39.5 degree nose paradox, which means the uh, geodetic uh, core seismic slip distribution obtained by the geodetic survey shows no uh, significant uh, slip around the 39.5 degree nose. Uh, but the tsunami uh, data uh, requires uh, uh, more than 30 meter delayed sleep uh, around that area. So to examine uh, this problem, to answer this problem is, is kind of important uh, to see, to examine if large uh, sleep to the trench extend to the fourth zone of 1896 San Lake tsunami earthquake or not. So, to answer that question, uh, the Fujiwara-san recently published uh, two uh, additional uh, differential basimetry data around uh, 39.5 degree nose. So this is a result of new uh, differential basimetry image. So the, from this image, uh, we estimated uh, some displacement, but those value is far smaller than our uncertainty, which is 20 meter in horizontal. And also, if you take a look at the special in the northern section, we don't see any change of basimetry uh, difference uh, at the trench axis. So from those uh, images, uh, we conclude that uh, there is no uh, observable uh, seafloor displacement at around 39.5 uh, degree nose. And then, uh, but, uh, if uh, I'm going to show you the high resolution seismic data we acquired in this box uh, at every four kilometer interval along the trench axis. So those section uh, looks like this. The, we can observe some geometry or structure probably indicate a uh, landslide to the trench axis. But problem is, uh, we don't know the timing of this event uh, because uh, we have no uh, seismic data acquired before earthquake in this area. So uh, even though the, some part of this uh, event occurred uh, during the Tohoku event, uh, we think the displacement by this event, I mean landslide, is uh, less than our, our uncertainty because we don't see uh, any uh, displacement in differential basimetry image. So the, uh, even if these things happen uh, during earthquakes, the displacement should be less than our uncertainty, uh, which is the uh, 20 meter in horizontal and several meter in vertical. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm gonna quick uh, sum up of the, my first part. Uh, the rapid response crews uh, obtained very clear geophysical data showing the uh, about 50 meter, more than 50 meter core seismic displacement reaching at uh, exactly at the trench axis. 
uh, but uh, the uh, uh, additional differential bus symmetry data and also high resolution seismic data show that no uh, strong evidence of seafloor displacement at uh, 100 km north and uh, 50 km south uh, from epicenter. And uh, again, the about 39.5 degree north paradox. At least uh, from the uh, differential basimetry data, uh, we observed no observable uh, core seismic displacement uh, there. The uh, landslide uh, to the trench axis may have occurred uh, based on the seismic structure, uh, but uh, we don't know the timing of this event. Okay, uh, the, I'm gonna present uh, uh, my uh, second uh, part of the uh, lecture. Uh, which is about a structure study of, of the oceanic plate entering the subduction zone as the input material or, uh, to the subduction zone. So in order to study uh, the structure and activity in the outer lies region of southern part of Korea and the Japan Trench area, uh, we have been acquiring our active and passive seismic data since uh, 2009 along those profile as well as at those stations, obvious stations. And uh, one of our motivation uh, to study uh, outer lies region is to, to examine our relationship between shallow megathrust uh, activity and uh, input sediment. The global compilation uh, shows that the large earthquake uh, tend to occur in six sediment trench uh, region, uh, but the 2011 Tohoku Oki earthquake and the 1952 uh, Kamchatka earthquake are exceptions. And also, a recent uh, IODP JFORST uh, discovered the uh, five meter thick Berisin uh, pelagic gray layer along the uh, plate boundary fold uh, across the trench axis. And also, the laboratory experiment uh, using core sample obtained by the uh, pelagic, thin pelagic gray layer shows a very, very low uh, frictional coefficient. So from those uh, uh, results, uh, it is proposed that pelagic gray layer on the incoming freight uh, plays the uh, key role to the, uh, on the uh, huge strip reaching to the uh, shallow portion uh, of the uh, trench region. So the, in order to uh, answer this question, uh, we have been uh, looking at seismic reflection data. And in this slide, uh, I'm going to show you the uh, overall structure uh, uh, from ocean basin to the trench uh, through the outer lies. The figure, uh, three figure from the top shows the uh, 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 seismic reflection image to the Korea Trench and the Northern Japan Trench and the Central Japan Trench. And the uh, bottom section uh, shows the uh, trench parallel uh, seismic section on outer lies uh, from uh, north to south. And if you take a look at those sections, the seismic character is very much a uh, textbook type, uh, typical oceanic crust. Uh, we see the uh, uh, transparent uh, sedimentary layer and also very strong and continuous reflection from top of basement and uh, uh, clear and continuous moho reflection from ocean basin to trench. But if you take a uh, closely look at those sections, uh, especially on the central par, uh, part of the uh, Japan Trench outer lies region, you, s you see this uh, the uh, very thin sediment uh, region uh, around here. And the uh, question is, what is this uh, thin sediment uh, spot? So in order to answer this question, first uh, we uh, map the our thickness variation of the sediment on the incoming plate uh, in this map uh, using the uh, all available seismic reflection data as well as high resolution seismic uh, data in trench axis. And from this image, we found that the sediment thickness is not very uniform in the incoming plate, but varied from the less than 50 meter in purple region uh, to the 700 meter in orange region. And the, uh, the uh, average thickness is about 500 meter uh, in the Green Legion area. And from this image, we found that uh, there is a two uh, thin sediment uh, patch in the incoming plate as well as the trench axis. Diameter uh, is about 150 
uh, kilometer and 50 kilometer at the trench axis, I mean, uh, outer lines and the trench axis. So the next question is, what is this thin uh, area? Uh, we have uh, studied or examined many uh, previous studies, and then uh, we found that uh, this thin sediment area is very much uh, consistent with the area the, uh, of the so-called Petit Sport, which is a small young uh, volcano uh, erupt along the uh, lithosphere fracture in the response of plate bending before outer lines. And also the uh, single channel uh, section uh, just on the one sing single petit spot uh, shows the, uh, there is many uh, zero and flow into the sediment. So from those uh, previous study, uh, we interpret that uh, in this uh, very thin sediment patch, uh, there is uh, uh, many zero and flow uh, split entire uh, this thin uh, sediment region. And this process uh, makes sedimentary layer uh, apparently thinner. And let's take a look at seismic section uh, in the uh, normal oceanic basin uh, where uh, normal thickness of sediment uh, are observed. The seismic character uh, in the normal thickness sediment region is quite the uh, same. Uh, as you can see here, the, uh, the seismic section shows the uh, very uh, scattered layer, thin scattered layer, underlying a well stratified thick, uh, set, uh, thick layer. And just by uh, the, our profile, that there is a DSDP site uh, 436, uh, and a single channel section uh, acquired uh, on that site shows the very uh, same uh, seismic character we observed along our profile, uh, which shows the uh, thin uh, scattered layer uh, beneath the well, well stratified uh, thick layer. And also core sample uh, uh, obtained from the uh, DSDP site 436 shows the uh, pelagic clay, thin pelagic clay layer uh, between uh, seismically well stratified uh, mudstone and uh, seismically scattered craterous chart uh, layer. So from those uh, the seismic section, as well as a core sample uh, obtained from site uh, 436, uh, we conclude that the pelagic clay widely spread in the area of the normal uh, sediment uh, thickness region in the northwestern Pacific area. But if you take a look at the seismic section we uh, acquired in the thin sediment patch, uh, as you expect, seismic character is very much different uh, from normal thickness or sediment region. We don't see any seismic character showing the uh, scattered thin layer at the bottom of the sediment and well stratified layer above that. So from this image, uh, we uh, propose that the pelagic gray layer is probably or likely missing uh, in the thin sediment uh, putty spot, young, volcan uh, young magmatic uh, volcanic uh, area. This result is uh, our observation uh, are very much consistent with expected uh, pelagic gray distribution obtained by uh, backtracking uh, the ocean drilling site. And Moore et al. 2015, uh, they uh, conclude that pelagic gray uh, widely uh, spread in the normal ocean basin. Uh, but uh, th uh, they also propose that uh, the uh, sea mount, uh, Cretaceous sea mount, uh, may break the continuity pelagic gray. Uh, but our new observation uh, indicates that young uh, petite spot magmatism, uh, which is widely uh, spread out in the outer lines region uh, could be another factor to break the continuity of the pelagic gray layer. So that means uh, the petite spot uh, is one of the probably key uh, structure to control the uh, uh, shallow uh, megastrust strip behavior. Okay, uh, another motivation of our uh, outer lines study is to understand fluid input to subduction zone. So it is proposed that plate coupling behavior are primarily controlled by uh, hydrous mineral and fluid, fluid pressures. For example, shallow uh, megastrust earthquake process uh, is proposed to be controlled by dehydration uh, from sediment, and uh, intermediate depth earthquake uh, controlled by uh, dehydration from oceanic plate. 
uh, but still a structural evidence showing fluid migration is not uh, very well examined. So in order to tackle with, with this uh, problem, uh, many uh, marine uh, geophysical groups have been studying uh, in uh, outer, outer lies region, uh, but most of them are studied uh, about uh, eastern uh, Pacific, where we have young and uh, uh, hot uh, plate uh, is subducting. Uh, but there is a very little information about the uh, western uh, Pacific, where we have cold and old uh, plate is subducting. So that's why uh, we are started a new project in the northwestern Pacific region. So uh, this is the uh, seismic velocity image uh, we obtained along two profiles uh, to uh, entering to the Korea Trench and the northern part of Japan Trench. Again, the uh, seismic structure is very much textbook type structure. Actually, we deployed uh, ocean bottom seismogram every six kilometers along the uh, uh, entire profile. So uh, I think the resolution is quite high. And uh, the seismic, I mean, thickness of crust is a seven kilometer. And also we have the high velocity gradient oceanic layer two and low velocity gradient uh, oceanic layer three. This is very much textbook type structure. But one surprising uh, structure we observed is a very high seismic velocity along the uh, uh, profile entering to the pan trench, which is parallel, I mean, perpendicular to magnetic anomaly. The PN velocity is 8.6 kilometer per second. And also, uh, we have the uh, perpendicular profile, and uh, we got PN velocity is about 7.8, which means uh, anisotropy is uh, uh, 9 to 10 percent, very strong anisotropy just below the moho. And also, the, the velocity, I mean, imp impedance contrast between sediment and oceanic crust uh, is very, very uh, high in this uh, profile. So that we observed a very clear P2S combated wave. Then uh, we acquired a VP, a VS uh, image uh, of the crust. And those two figures uh, is uh, seismic uh, BPVS image obtained by Fujiya-san and flattened by uh, along the flattened along the uh, basement. And if you take a look at uh, those sections, it's very clear we have very much significant uh, VPVS uh, increase uh, to the trench uh, from 150 kilometer away from the trench axis. And also, uh, if you take a look at the peer velocity perturbation uh, below Moho, uh, the, these two figures uh, indicate the velocity perturbation flattened along the uh, Moho uh, reflection. Again, uh, we see the very much velocity de reduction uh, close to the trench around 150 kilometers uh, along the uh, Japan Trench profile. And in the Korea Trench profile, the uh, area is a little bit smaller, but uh, we still see the very much velocity reduction close to the trench. And then, uh, if you take a look at, or if you compare uh, those two figures uh, closely, you see that the uh, thickening of the FVS ratio in the crust and also reduction of uh, BP velocity in the mantle is uh, more significant uh, along the profile to the Japan Trench uh, compared to the Crete Trench. So the, in the next slide, uh, in the next couple of slides, uh, I'm going to uh, show you uh, what control uh, those differences. The first, uh, we uh, took a look at uh, the basimetry uh, of the incoming plate. So those two figures is the uh, uh, cross-section of basimetry to the Korea Trench in blue one and uh, to the, red, uh, the Japan Trench in the red one. And uh, we subtracted a uh, general trend of subduction to show uh, this uh, uh, cross-section. So the, uh, by comparing those two uh, set of uh, cross-section, uh, you see that the uh, bending related horse grab and uh, structure is um, uh, much larger. I mean, throw of the uh, bend fault is uh, much, much larger in the Japan Trench compared to those in Korea Trench. And also, web length of the uh, horse grab and structure is much uh, longer in Japan Trench. And also, if you take a look at strike uh, of the bend related fault, we see the very much different a bit difference uh, in Korea and Japan Trench. In the Korea Trench, the uh, strike of the band-related fault is uh, uh, along one uh, single direction, 
actually along the uh, trench as well as magnetic anomaly. But if you take a look at the strike distribution uh, of the ventilated fault in Japan Trench, that's scattered very much from uh, all the fracture zone uh, direction to the uh, magnetic uh, anomaly direction through the uh, strike of the trench axis. So from those uh, image, I mean uh, data, the, uh, we uh, conclude that the oceanic plate entering to Japan Trench is uh, more highly fluctuated uh, compared to the Creel Trench. And this is uh, probably uh, the cause of the making difference of the VPVS structure and also the uh, P wave velocity perturbation. And then uh, next, uh, we're going to take a look at the effect of the difference uh, on the uh, seismic activity along the uh, subduction uh, interface. The, uh, to consider that, uh, we differ the uh, previous study by Kitter and et al. And she, uh, they uh, calculated and counted number of the earthquake uh, along the upper plane, double si along the uh, upper plane of the double seismic zone, uh, which uh, is caused by uh, uh, dehydration uh, from the oceanic plate. And if you take a look at uh, this histogram, so you see that the uh, seismicity along the upper plane of double seismic zone is almost four or five times higher uh, in Japan Trench than those uh, of the Korea Trench. So the, our conclusion is the, in, in Japan Trench, we see the very much uh, velocity change to the trench uh, compared to Korea Trench. And if you take a look at uh, the symmetry in the uh, uh, Japan Trench and Korea Trench, uh, we know that uh, Korea tr Japan Trench uh, plate is uh, more highly fluctuated. And uh, those differences makes the uh, difference of the subduction uh, seismicity. So the uh, brief uh, conclusion summary of the second part, uh, we find that there is a thin sediment per, uh, patch in the outer lines and trench axis. And those area where co correspond to the area of a petite spot uh, volcanic, volcanic activity and uh, uh, crater layer uh, is probably uh, missing in those areas. And also the VP reduction and the PVS uh, increase, uh, which indicate development of, of the uh, band rated fault uh, imaged uh, uh, from the 150 kilometer uh, from trench. And also those uh, structure variations are uh, more significant in Japan Trench. Uh, and uh, those differences are correlated, uh, well correlated with uh, subduction seismicity along the double seismic zone. Okay, so the, uh, taking uh, remaining uh, 12 or 13 minutes, I'm gonna show you the uh, review of our previous uh, structure study in the uh, East Boning uh, Mariana arc as an output from the uh, subduction zone. So the, uh, we got uh, our motivation uh, from the result of the pioneer study of the uh, island arc uh, active source study by Japanese uh, marine seismology group. So here and others, uh, they showed that, uh, that six, uh, six kilometer per second layer in the middle crust uh, along the uh, profile at the northern part of the East arc. And those results is very much support the petrological uh, model, which predict uh, growing of the continental crust uh, and, uh, over, uh, above the subduction zone. Uh, but soon after the Suehiro study, US group uh, studied in the Aleutian arc, and they showed uh, no significant six kilometer layer in the uh, middle part of the crust. So this makes uh, everything is very complicated. And our question is, how does the uh, middle crust extend along the entire East Bonnie Mariana arc? Uh, the, uh, the six kilometer per second layer uh, observed by Sea Hero extend entire uh, East Bonnie arc, or uh, their structure is uh, just a local uh, structure in the northern part of East arc? Uh, that is a question we'd like to address. So in order to address uh, this question, uh, we uh, processed uh, active source seismic data along a bunch of profile to cover the entire East Bonin arc. Uh, we acquired those data as a part of Japanese continental shell project. And the tectonic and magnetic uh, history in the East Bonin Mariana arc uh, were studied. And uh, for example, Stein et al. 
2003, uh, they uh, summarize the tectonic history in this figure. The, uh, the subduction initiation in this arc uh, 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 occurred around 50 to 40 MVA, and uh, at the land 30 to uh, uh, 15 MVA, we have forced uh, backup lifting, uh, which was formed the Shikoku Parasvera uh, backup basin. And now uh, we are having the second uh, the backup uh, opening our stage in this arc. So for today, uh, I chose uh, three along arc profiles. One is along blue line uh, on the volcanic front, and the other one is along red line uh, in the rear arc, and the third one is along black line uh, located in very uh, close to whole arc. The reason uh, why I chose uh, three profile is that the, the blue profile uh, uh, should uh, preserves the entire process of the aqua evolution, and the uh, red uh, structure and uh, the red profile uh, may preserve the uh, 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 magmatic process before the second unlifted arc stage, and the uh, black profile uh, preserve, shows the, uh, the magmatic process uh, during the uh, subduction initiation. So in the next slide, I'm going to show you the uh, 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 a long volcanic front uh, profile. So this is the seismic velocity uh, image uh, from Japanese island here to the Iwo Jima. Profile length is uh, more than 1,000 kilometer. And again, we deploy the ocean bottom seismogram uh, at every five kilometer uh, entire this profile. So from this image, uh, I think you see the two uh, wavelengths of structure variation. The one is very long wavelengths uh, structure variation, which is a thick uh, is crust versus very thin uh, boning crust. And uh, uh, we uh, interpret those differences may uh, reflect a difference of, uh, of the magmatic production uh, in both areas. And the uh, second uh, structure variation, uh, which is more important, I think, uh, that is more a shorter wavelength uh, structure variation. In this figure, uh, you can see the repeated thickening of the green uh, layer which shows a BP of, of around uh, 6 to 6.8 kilometer per second. Uh, and those layers is interpreted uh, ferrocytic to intermediate uh, component crust. So in order to demonstrate the thickness variation of middle crust, I uh, just plot the uh, thickness variation curve of the middle crust along the profile. And uh, as you expect, uh, we see the repeated thickening of the middle crust along the entire profile. And the next thing what, what uh, we did is we compiled the average weight percent of SYO2 uh, of the volcanic rock uh, sampled at a volcano on the uh, East Boeing uh, volcanic front. And uh, if uh, you, uh, we plot, actually we plot the location of, of the uh, basalt volcano as a red dot uh, in the diagram in the middle. And from this image, uh, we found a very important result uh, about the arc evolution. In this figure, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the crustal thickening occurred uh, beneath each basalt volcano center. So this, uh, from this figure, uh, we uh, conclude that the middle crust is, uh, is thickening, is thickened in the, uh, each basalt volcano center along the uh, entire East Bonin arc. And then uh, we calculated average crustal velocity along uh, this profile, and uh, average velocity, uh, crustal velocity reflect uh, bulk chemical component of, of the crust. And uh, if you take a look at this figure, and you see the average velocity of this profile is about 6.8 and 7.0 kilometers per second, uh, which is far faster than the average velocity of typical continental crust, which shows the uh, orange uh, area. So if we accept the petrological model, which uh, proposes the uh, growth of continental crust uh, above the subduction zone, we need some more process to reduce the seismic velocity. OK, so the, uh, in the next slide, uh, I'm going to show you the uh, seismic velocity image of, along the rear arc, uh, which may preserve the magmatic process uh, before second unlifted uh, stage. So the second figure uh, from the top shows the uh, 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 
seismic velocity along the rear arc, again, uh, we see the repeated thickening of the middle crust. And uh, we plot the uh, thickness variation curve, uh, like we, uh, I showed before. And the uh, point is, the uh, maximum thickness of the middle crust along this profile is about 10 kilometers. And uh, compare, uh, by comparing the uh, maximum thickness of middle crust in, in the current volcanic arc, uh, we uh, conclude that about 6% volume of middle crust has been formed before a second unlifted uh, stage in the rear arc. And uh, the uh, last image I'm going to show you is the very whole arc uh, profile, a long black uh, profile, which is located exactly on the uh, Bonin Ridge. And uh, the reason we uh, take this profile is petrological uh, model predicts the so-called whole arc oceanic uh, splitting due to the abrupt uh, spontaneous uh, substance of the old and cold uh, Pacific plate. So the, uh, the seismic image along the Boninli core profile is uh, this one. So uh, actually, uh, this structure is very much a uh, surprising structure to me because uh, if you take a look at this one, the uh, crustal thickness in the northern half of the profile is very, very thin even though uh, this profile is located a uh, large uh, uh, boning, uh, uh, boning ridge. As I mentioned, the petrological model predicts the uh, oceanic crust in the very whole region. So uh, we compared uh, the uh, our obtained velocity uh, with the uh, typical oceanic crust. In the upper left figure, the black line indicates velocity depth curve we obtained from the northern half of our profile. And the gray region uh, shows the uh, uh, velocity depth uh, uh, profile of the typical oceanic crust. So uh, from this uh, uh, the figure, uh, we found that uh, velocity depth curve uh, of the northern part of Bonin Ridge uh, very much were overlapped uh, with the typical oceanic crust. So that means uh, at least northern half of Bonin Ridge is seism seismologically oceanic crust. Uh, but if you take a look at the seismic velocity image in the, I mean, uh, velocity depth curve uh, in the central part of our profile, uh, where uh, we have the younger crustal age, uh, slightly younger crustal age, uh, seismic velocity uh, profile is uh, clearly slower than the typical oceanic crust. And recently, uh, the Christensen uh, et al., uh, they processed even more trenchward profile. Uh, I uh, plot uh, their section uh, with the same scale of, of ours. And they found that cluster thickness along uh, even more uh, uh, trenchward profile, pink one, uh, they found that cluster thickness is uh, almost double, uh, 10 to 15 uh, kilometers thick at around uh, IODP site uh, 352. And uh, they conclude that, uh, they interpret that the crust, crust thickness, I mean crust along their profile, uh, could have been thickened uh, or altered after emplacement. And but uh, uh, the one thing I would like to uh, emphasize is that uh, we reprocessed the seismic data as well as the gravity data along deep profile uh, from the uh, Shikoku Basin to the uh, uh, trench crossing the boning arc, uh, those, result, no, those new results show that cluster thickening toward the trench from the boning arc. So the, uh, the, the, the reason why we have cluster thickening from boning ridge to the trench is still open question, uh, but I, I hope the uh, new IODP uh, result uh, can solve this problem. Okay, the uh, summary of my uh, second topics. The, the uh, main topic is this, uh, main summary is this uh, figure. Uh, we uh, got the seismic image, uh, which is well demonstrate uh, cluster evolution from the thin Huarak oceanic crust to the uh, uh, mature islander crust, where uh, we observed the thick uh, middle crust beneath each basalt uh, volcano. Yes. Okay, uh, this is the uh, last slide I'd like to show you. Uh, about the general conclusion. Uh, the, about the uh, slip to the trench, 
we observed very clear evidence showing the slip trends around 38 degree close to the epicenter, but no detectable displacement uh, 100 kilometer and uh, or 100 kilometer north and 50 kilometer south uh, from the epicenter. And uh, about second topic, oceanic plate entering subduction zone to Japan Trench, uh, we, we found that the input sediment thickness is not uniform, and uh, the, in the thin sediment layer, uh, we interpret clay, uh, pelagic clay layer is likely missing, and the structure change due to bending related uh, fault become active at around 150 kilometers from trench, and uh, structure change due to this bending is much more uh, significant in Japan Trench, uh, where we have very highly fractured oceanic crust uh, uh, there. And uh, about that topic is born in intraoceanic arc. Uh, we found that the uh, six kilometer ferrocic to uh, intermediate component middle crust uh, become thickened uh, beneath each basalt volcano center. Uh, that means basalt volcano is a place to uh, make the uh, continental type uh, crust. And in the whole arc, uh, we see the very much different uh, crust. The crustal structure in the whole arc is uh, very much seismologically oceanic crust, uh, which supports the petrological idea, uh, 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 which indicates the whole arc oceanic spreading during the uh, very initial stage of arc subduction. Okay, so this is our, our, my conclusion, and I very much hope uh, to help the, uh, your future study by taking a look at uh, those, uh, our new observation. Okay, I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kodaira. Um, do we have some questions from the audience? Well, I guess I can ask a question then. Uh, so, um, if the uh, pelagic clay layer is essential for the slip to the trench, and uh, it seems to be destroyed by petit spot volcanism, can you map out areas around the world's subduction zones which would be susceptible to slip to the trench? The first of all, uh, the uh Pelagic clay is expected to dispute entire northern part of the Pacific area generally. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Moore et al. Uh, their paper uh, mentioned that uh, seamount uh, break the distribution of the uh, pelagic clay distribution. And we found Putispot is another factor. And uh, the uh, several pathological uh, or geological study found uh, evidence of Putispot not only in Japan Trench, for example, close to the uh, uh, Central America Trench and, and so on. So there should be uh, a globally distributed, uh, I mean, pretty spots should be globally distributed. But uh, so far we haven't mapped a global view of the pretty spot distribution. It takes very, very long time to map everything. Do we have other questions from the audience? Um, yes, there. Uh, Maybe the, repeat the uh, you are asking our uh, st structure image can explain the thickness of double seismic zone. Yes, uh, our question is unfortunately we can't resolve that depth. The, uh, we are using uh, active source data uh, that only samples several kilometers, I mean, let's say 10 kilometers or so uh, from Moho. So we don't know what happened in much deeper part. Uh, we need to. Uh, uh, kind of earthquake data to know th those structure. Yeah, in the mantle, right. Yes. Are there other questions? Greg. Yeah, so 
very nice talk, first of all. In, in the repeat bathymetry that you showed in the, in the first section of the, of the talk, it, it seemed like there was a, a large uplift and then a slump right behind it because it was blue. And then farther towards land from there, it seemed like the slip or the displacement was a lot less than 50 meters. It was more like 20 or 30 meters. Did I read that correctly? And, and if so, how should we interpret that in light of the, the various yeah, uh, th that basimetry, differential basimetry image is a kind of vertical difference. The 50 and the 56 is a horizontal displacement. Uh, we estimate it by taking a look at cor cross correlation. And, and so from that re repeat bathymetry, is this, is this horizontal slip you would estimate, estimate consistent with the other models? Oh, yes, uh, I, I think so. The, the 50, 60 in the central part of Japan trench is very much consistent with uh, uh, the strip distribution by, obtained by other uh, data. Yes, uh, Julie. The variations in the thickness of the sediments and the sediment types that you interpret on the incoming plate do you think that some of those play a role in the distribution of slip that you see along the, the Japan Trench in that you see the cessation of slip to the north and to the south? Do you think that's influenced by sediment thickness? You are asking the relationship between thickness uh, variation and the slip distribution. Yes. Yes, uh, we are still thinking, I mean, investigating about that. But it looks like the uh, northern end of the slip region is located just south of the uh, very thin patch uh, we observed in trench axis. So it looks like a thin, thin patch is a kind of barrier of northern propagation uh, of the large slip. That is what we are thinking right now. Very nice. Any other questions? Okay, well, let's thank uh, Dr. Kodaira again for an excellent lecture.